Welcome back to Casey Cares, Kansas City's nonprofit window, nonprofit voice. We are telling the stories of the Kansas City nonprofit communities and people behind them. I'm Bobby Keys. And I'm Ruth Bottom Biggest. Yes, Ruth. We are, Boy. We are doing the We're remote broadcast. <laughs> But are you wearing a mask? That's what I want to know. I, I, I wear a mask at all times now. I don't know what to do. I'm confused. I just, my kids look at me and they're like, what are you doing? It's like, I'm <laughs> safety first, kids. And get away from me. That's Six right. Feet away. Safety first. <laughs> I'll tell you, I have a newfound respect, though, for medical professionals who wear masks and, you know, functioning. I had to do a grocery run and I wore my mask. And I'll tell you, I felt like I'd had an hour and a half workout, you know, just trying to, you know, navigate and breathe. Yeah. And yeah. the thing that I find is really difficult is I always like to, you know, catch somebody in a smile. And it's hard to tell if someone's smiling. I guess it depends <laughs> on the mask you wear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can make it uh, the eye smile now, right? You, that's how you can see if someone's that's genuinely right. smiling. <laughs> and we... And I'll tell you who's someone who's smiling is Teresa Hamilton, who is the head of Giving the Basics here in Kansas City. She should be smiling because she's doing great stuff. Teresa, <laughs> yes. welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate all that you guys do and everyone who's out there trying to battle this, this uh, virus. It's crazy. Well, you've been a guest before, and you guys are the hygiene hub, so you're pulling all those things that doesn't get covered in governmental assistance to people in regular times. It's got to be nuts now. Yeah, that's right. What we, what we do is for the last nine years, we have been at Kansas City's hygiene hub for the KC Metro. We have been uh, fulfilling orders for all, 76 local pantries and 350 schools four police departments, and over a 1,000 homebound seniors to get the incontinence products. And we do that every month. They order, and we fulfill their orders. But during this time, they, you know, we've been asked to bigger volume of products to each of our locations. We've also been asked to um, double the amount of time for picking up. So really, we're sending out almost four times as much product as we used to with a limited staff and, you know, big volunteer constraints. You know how that goes. Of course. So how are you getting stuff? Well, we already have manufacturers and distributors that help us out and we purchase. We can triple the dollar with financial donations. And then we have rock star people who uh, step forward and say, hey, I've got some stuff that I want to give you. For example, I'm going to use, uh, we've got a couple just local rotary clubs that have said, let us help you out. We want to help you get stuff. We've had donors step forward with financial donations. And then Johnson County Christmas Bureau said, hey, we've got stock that we were saving for Christmas. Let's push that forward. So it's those kind of rock stars that help you continue to get the flow of products in. The cool thing Giving the Basics is doing is we have a, an amazing database. So we're tracking the product in and the product out. So after this uh, COVID-19 thing is dead and gone, we will have amazing tracking for what Kansas City needs to have in stock in their area at any point in time for all of these products. So that's very cool. That is very cool. So how did this all come together and come about? I mean, we've been dealing now with COVID-19, really hunkered in for about a month. So how do you make this kind of stuff happen with those kinds of restraints? Well, it's really tough because we have over 10,000 volunteer hours a year. So we're trying to do this, uh, the order filling and packaging with staff and the four local police departments have been amazing at stepping up and they have been helping us fill orders, package product. Oh my gosh, I cannot say enough about all the police departments. So that's Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, Kansas City, Kansas, Shawnee, and the Johnson County Sheriff's Department. That's where they're spending their time to make sure people can get clean so they can stay healthy, right? So when COVID-19 hit, we had talked to both mayor's offices, and we said, hey, we'll continue business as usual that we've been doing for the last nine years, 
but we would be happy to increase the volume so that more is getting out there and in the hands of people more regularly through the pantries. And then we're going to um, add on another twice a month. We'll be letting them pick up. So it was really, really cool to see that cooperative effort. Uh, along with that, we had a unique ability to track. So we just thought if we are not going to let COVID-19 get us down. We're just going to ramp it up. So we're ramping it up and getting it out there just, like I said, do to some really generous people. I got a call one day from, or a text one day from someone who said, I'm sending you $50,000 because the people have to have these products and we're worried about people losing their jobs. That's the kind of cool things that happen in our world. And, you know, I, I can receive a check for $5. Every bit of it helps, but we don't help individuals. We load the pantry. So if you can imagine 76 pantries being loaded with product twice a month so people can go in there and get what they need, whatever's closest to their house. That's the way the system works. So how does that, I guess, you know, moving with the volunteers and everything, that's, you know, that is, I may have missed that, but it's really tough. How Um, does that work? It's super tough. And so hopefully, you know, we can have 10 people at a time down there. So at this point we are just doing safe distancing gloves and masks for volunteers. If companies want to volunteer, they have to know that they'll have to be under those constraints. Uh, We won't have more than 10, including our staff. We typically have six big volunteer sessions uh, a week at giving the basics. And those sessions hold from eight to 130 people at a time. So that's why our numbers are going to be so down. So we can do this for the short term, for the long term, we've got to get, some things going here that are not with a little less constraint, obviously. What are folks telling you? I mean, you're connected with the city and all these different governmental folks who are really controlling our lives now. Um, How does that all work? Well, you know, honestly, I can't really speak for any of them. I know that they're working their tails off. And honestly, we live in a world where, you know, there's a lot of accountability after the fact. So, you know, we can't really armchair quarterback this thing where they're concerned. What we have to do is say, you know, we'll do the best we can to follow the restrictions that they're giving us. And we'll also encourage that as we as a society need to kind of loosen up those constraints. I think it's really critical for us to be able to encourage them. Hey, we can, we can have 20 people now, you know, with masks and safe distancing. Who's huge warehouse? And they have only 10 people there. It's crazy. So um, the cities I know, I just, I look at the, the mayor Alvey in Kansas, Kansas and the good work that he's doing and how they say we're so proud of him. He's doing such a great job and he's communicating well with the governor and listening to those kinds of stories are really just heartwarming. Um, they, they showed up with some masks for us, for our volunteers, which was really cool. Um, Kansas State Kansas Emergency Crew did, which was, you know, just knowing that we're going to need it or we can't get the product into the hands of the people so they can get clean. They get it. I think they want these rules to go away as fast as we do. And, you know, Ruth, honestly, people do what they're going to yeah. do. They respond how they're going to respond. If they're going to get mad, they're going to get mad. If they're going to run or hide, it's just everybody – does what they need to do to handle the situation. And I think they're just trying to keep a handle on all those personalities out there that are working, you know, while all this stuff is going on. Gotta be, I'd hate their job. I'd hate to have their job. Sounds terrible. So so real quick, you know, when it comes to fundraising for you in the past, because that's a lot of stuff that you guys have to have to come up with and have to, you know, gather. And there's a lot of people, I mean, that costs money and you have to fundraise. And then, you know, in the past, did you guys have events? And then what do you kind of, I mean, or is it more digital based for you? And now what does that look like going forward? Uh, It's really tough because, you know, the big darn it is we're not going to be able to have gala. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we had to cancel our race. We had a bingo event we had to cancel. Uh, So that takes all that funding away. So, you know, everyone hopes that, you know, people will say, hey, instead of going to those things, let's just donate. So we have our donation portal online. We're trying to put like a campaign out there that says, please help us, you know, get the product out there. You know, the biggest deal for giving the basics is at the end of this, we're willing to push all this product out as it's needed in a trackable and efficient way. Right. But at the end of it, we've got our stock for Kansas City. And it used to be that we could triple the dollar. Now these prices on these products are going to go up. So 
we may only be able to double the dollar with our donation, or maybe it's a dollar thirty-five. Wow, you know, wow. <laughs> I mean, our, our, our dollars were thirty-five cents. We don't wow. know what that looks like, but we do know that we have millions of dollars in inventory that we have to restock. So we need those donations of product and financial donations so that we can do that for Kansas City. If we weren't positioned like we are right now, mm. thank God yeah. we have as much product as we do. This city would really be in trouble. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a, that is a, that is a very precarious, you know, situation you have, the prices are going to go up and you're getting less funding. And then on top of, yeah. Right. And then you're losing, you're losing, you know, that, that, that power, that person power, that those resources, that is, that, that is, that is tough, but you know, fortunately. Yeah, we're trying to keep people employed mm-hmm. as we're shifting roles, you know, and sometimes it's not easy to shift roles because we need people who are still doing it. We have a group called Moonshot Innovations. I'm going to tell you what, they are rock stars. They put together a database for us. It was a $263,000 donation a couple of years ago so that we could track every hygiene need and every location it's going to. Well, the, we've tracked the entire United States for the last nine years. Just so you know, we attract the need for hygiene products specific and cleaning products throughout the entire country. So we have got an incredible database we could help the government right now if we could give them these are the locations. Do they have a dock? What time are they open? I mean, this this group, this moonshot, I'm not kidding you. They're amazing at what they do. And so I love to talk about them because we already had tracking in place before they came in and we were doing it on spreadsheets and now Mm. we're able to, our time is cut down so significantly (laughs) and everything is done through reporting. It's so cool. Yeah. I I love it. That's, that's my language right there. Automation, Google sheets, and then data collection. Cause that is, (laughs) that is so much, that's, that's power. That is so much power for you. And to have that at at your tip, the tip of your fingertips right there, it's people don't realize that that is, that's essential, especially, especially for impact reporting. Right, which is crucial. Well, if you think about, yeah, if you think about charities, and we're so progressive because our tracking, I can tell you at what point, every point in time in the month, where shampoos needed the most in the city, where that's deodorant amazing. is needed, where all-purpose cleaners yeah. needed, because that's how the tracks work. Um, so so it's just, really an amazing thing, and, and so now you can see why at any point in time, I can look at a dashboard and tell how many volunteer hours we have, what companies they came from. It's just an amazing system that we've got. So I think that's why we can spend our time, you know, we go out and procure and get all these products to people because we're working half as hard in the office and twice as fast due to their help. Compass Capital has been amazing as well. You guys are all about collaboration. I mean, just the various organizations you even mentioned um, who are getting you the product that you all are able to get out right now in a time of crisis. Are you, do you have time to take a breath and, uh, you know, strategize with your board to say, okay, in this world that hopefully 30, 60, 90 days is back to the quote, new normal David Renz talked about, how are we going to get what we need? I think that we're really positioned well for, our board, they are rock stars. I mean, if you look on our website, on the givingthebasics.org website, you will see the board is just amazing at what they do. And so we feel really fortunate to have that kind of depth. They get it. They get it on every level. They've been embracing this for the last nine years before this thing even hit. Some of our donors, Peter and Veronica Maluk from Creative Planning, I'm going to tell you what, they, off, they gave us a million dollars for a building so that we could ha- be above ground running our business and making sure that we were taking hygiene seriously years ago. That's foresight. So I think a lot of the people yeah. that work with giving the basics already get it, that we needed it. And now they're like, thank God we have as much as we do. Uh, you guys are just out there helping incredibly. Any stories that you're hearing from the volunteers you're working with who many of them who go out on the front lines are from your partner schools and nonprofits. Um, you know, what are you hearing? From the people who well, here's, here's what product? we're hearing. We're hearing that, you know, of course, you know, everyone wants masks and gloves. That's one of the first things. They need the cleaning supplies and all these hygiene products. But their big deal is how long is this going to last? You know, that's their biggest question is, 
How long do you think this is going to go on? Are you always going to have what we need? And I just can, I can really reassure people that both of the mayor's offices are, they're thinking it through. They know their funding, unfortunately, may not come straight to them. I'm, my understanding is that the funding is being given based on population, not necessarily on, on need or, um, you know, the, yeah. So I don't know if that's right or not, but they've got a lot of moving parts they've got to figure out. And I just, I think it's really good for everybody to just know that, you know, we're going to get through this together. It's going to be something that we're going to learn a lot from, including giving the basics. Um, you know, we're going to learn a lot and we'll be just smarter and better as a society. Some of our volunteers are like, we wish we could come. I mean, they're bored. We wish we could come. Yeah. I wish you could too, but we're going to, we're going to get to know ourselves pretty well. Right. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I don't think I'm going to add to that line. But there will be a time everybody will be able to gather together, and you'll be at the forefront. Teresa, thank you so much for taking time out of your very, very, very busy life now to share with us. And thank you for listening to KC Cares, Kansas City's nonprofit voice. We're produced by Charitable Communications, a 501c3 nonprofit ourselves. We're proudly sponsored by the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation. If you like what you hear, you want to support our efforts, you can go to kccaresonline.org, where you will find our podcast evergreen there all the time. Spread the love. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Casey Cares Online. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening to Casey Cares. COVID-19 is a severe lung infection. Trust the American Lung Association for science-based public health information, especially for the 36 million Americans who live with lung disease. We have resources to protect your lung health access expertise from medical professionals and peer-to-peer -peer support through our online communities. Visit lung.org for daily updates or call 1-800-LUNG-USA. Inspired by you and Mary and Kaufman, the Kaufman Foundation believes that every person, regardless of their background, should have the opportunity to learn, to take risks, and to own their success. Working together with our Kansas City community and beyond, we take on approaches that break down barriers, providing people with the necessary skills throughout life to make or take a job and ultimately give back to their community. By listening to the communities, we serve, tap into our learnings and relationships, and bring everyone together to build and support programs that improve education, boost entrepreneurship, and help Kansas City thrive. Learn more at Kaufman.org.